Hello writer friends! If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back, and if you're new here, welcome! My name is Michelle Winkler and I'm an indie author in training. On this channel I post videos about my self-publishing journey and share the mistakes I made so hopefully you don't have to make them too. I was so excited to learn that Scrivener 3 for Windows is finally out. It was released not too long ago, I hope maybe a month or two, I don't know where I've been. But anyway, I'm really excited because it has so many cool new features that are going to be very helpful to writers. Now the topic of compiling, which is actually the last thing you do, <laughs> was requested, oh my gosh, over a year ago maybe? I'm really sorry for the delay. Now for this video, I'm assuming that you have a basic idea of Scrivener, at least. You've used the program before and you know your way around the software. If you haven't, I will be doing an update to my Getting Started Fast with Scrivener video. If you don't want to wait for that to come out, it should be next week. But if you don't want to wait, I have another video which is for version 1 of Scrivener. I'll link that in the description. That'll at least give you an idea of the user face and how it works. User face? <laughs> user interface. Um, and how to find your way around the program. So I will be updating that video with the new version 3 probably next weekend, depending on how editing goes. Click subscribe and ring the bell and you'll be notified as soon as that video is up. So without further ado, let's get to the computer and learn how to compile with Scrivener. Version 3 for Windows. All right, so here we are on my desktop and everything's all set, my novel's done, and it's ready to go. There's a few things you need to understand besides just the compiling because it relies on something called section types. So we're going to go through section types first so that we can have that part set up and then once that's set up then we can start doing the compiling. Okay, so section types, each one of these can be formatted a little differently. Your plain old body text of your book is going to be formatted different than the chapter titles. You could go through and format each of those individually, but that takes forever and why would you want to do that? You want software to do it all for you. Here's how we tell Scrivener how to do that. The first step is to set up your binder. I'm going to go the easy way, <laughs> so this video is not too long, and show you a Kindle ebook. Nice and simple. It's going to have chapters, the title page, and that's about it. Once you understand how a format is set up, then you can set it up however you want. So I have this main folder up here, which is titled manuscript. You probably have it titled draft or something, which is what Scrivener usually makes it. I have a dedication page I want in the beginning, and then I have the chapters. This is the first chapter, this is the second chapter, and this is actually an anthology of mine. I created 10 stories based on the characters for my debut novel and sent them one a month to my newsletter subscribers. And at the end, I was like, why don't I just put it all in one book for them? So that's what this is. So each one of these, we're going to call them chapters, even though they're short stories. And then at the bottom or at the end of the book, I have a little thank you page. Each one of these is going to be formatted a little differently. Manuscript obviously isn't going to print. That's just the folder that all the other folders are in. This Bewitched right here is the first chapter. That's the chapter title, Bewitched. And then Raven is the second chapter title. So these chapter titles are going to be formatted differently than the actual text of those chapters. And all those are going to be diff formatted differently than the thank you page and the dedication page. So now we need to tell, set up Scrivener so that it understands these different levels. So what you want to do first, once you know you have this folder set up right, is you're going to go to Project at the top here. Oops, project. Ah, project Settings. And make sure Section Types is highlighted. You, you probably have things like heading, subheading, or something. Um, whatever it has here, you want to subtract the ones that you don't want. There's a little minus sign down here at the bottom. Subtract that. And then, like, say you didn't want chapters, you wanted something else, you just double click and then you can type in whatever you want. But these are the way I want them. I want manuscript, and then chapter is one folder down, and then scene is the text within each folder. And then I have part because my thank you at the end and my dedication at the beginning are going to be formatted separately from the chapters. So once you have this set up the way you want, then you go to this tab up here that says default types by structure. And again, I didn't fix this because I was messing with it earlier. Yours probably looks like this. You have all folders, all file groups, and all files, and each one has a different section type. As you notice, we have two different levels of folders. We have the overall manuscript one, which isn't going to really actually print, and then each chapter is a folder. So we're going to make sure all folders are selected, and then down here at the bottom left, click this little plus sign, and it automatically names it 
don't worry about that. All you have to do is click on it and you'll see over in your binder here on the left which one it's talking about. So the root folder, this front matter research and all this down at the bottom, that doesn't actually print, so don't worry about it. We're worrying about the first folder is the root folder. And then level one folders are all these chapter folders. So these are gonna be chapters. So now over here, as you see the root folder is manuscript, the level ones and deeper, we want those to be formatted like chapters. So you're gonna click it and click it again. All file groups, we don't have that in this book. It would be like if in Raven we had several scenes in individual documents, then it would be a group of files, but we don't have that. So don't worry about that line unless you do, in which case you just need to make sure that the section type is for um, what you want. So now all files, we want that to be a scene. So now, I hope I'm making sense of this. If I'm not, leave a comment, ask me what the heck I'm talking about, and I'll try to do another video or maybe I'll just answer you in the comments. But, so now we've got each one of these outline levels set to a specific section type, because later we're gonna tell it how to format each type. So now you're gonna click OK. And there's one thing, the dedication page and the thank you page are not gonna be formatted, formatted the same as the scenes themselves. So you can individually format these to be separate. So you just click on it, thank you, or click on the page, Go to format style. Hang on, I gotta figure out what I'm doing here. Oh, okay. <laughs> A lot easier than that. Just right click the document that you wanna be formatted different and click section type. And we have this separate section called part. And this dedication up here in the beginning is also gonna be section type. Oh, I see this one wasn't. This one's gonna be section type part. Whew, okay, so now we're ready to start compiling, kind of. We need to tell it how we're gonna format each one of the types we just designated. So you go file, compile. This is actually a lot better system than the last version of Scrivener. First thing you wanna do, compile for. As you see, there's print, PDF. Now print isn't for printing, it's to send it to the printer. Found that out the hard way. So we're gonna choose for Kindle eBook. There is a Kindle eBook.mobi. Hi, editing Michelle here. <laughs> I was trying to explain when I used the .mobi, when I compiled it into .mobi, which is what Kindle is, I put it into the Kindle previewer to make sure it's all lined up right, and it has this nifty little message, we recommend using ePub format. Please use a valid ePub. Don't know why it's doing that to me. So I recommend you use the EPUB format. So there's two different EPUB formats, uh, EPUB 2 and EPUB 3, as you can see here. All it means is that EPUB 3 is the most recent version. I recommend you use that just because it'll have the most compatibility, the most updated features and all that, even though it's gonna be a Kindle book. Okay, back to filming me. <laughs> When you first go into it the first time, it's gonna have this yellow warning little paragraph just saying that no formats have been chosen. Since I've used this before already, mine doesn't have that, but that's what you will see. And what you need to do is go down to the cent bottom of the middle column here and click Assign Section Layouts. Bear with me, we're almost done. For the chapter, how do you want your chapter title to look? It could just say part one, it could be part one section title. I like to have mine doo -doo -doo, with chapter, whatever the number is, and then the title of the chapter. That's how I want my chapters to look. Scenes, the scene is the text from the chapter title on. And so what I want is I just want it to be plain text, no page break. The way it's gonna look is it's gonna have your chapter title and then right after that, your text. Now, yes, you could choose scene and then choose this. It's the same thing, but we've sep we've already designated these folders to be chapters. I don't know what would happen if you didn't do that and you just had the text be seen. I don't know if it would pull the chapter numbers and do it correctly or not. And then you have part. That one we're gonna have down here where it's just the text, but there's a page break. If you don't do this, you're gonna have like the end of chapter one and right after that is gonna be that last thank you page. There's not gonna be any kind of break there. So we want the one with the page break just for the part. Okay, so this is how our, our chapters are gonna look. So we're gonna compile 
the entire manuscript. Go find where you want to put that file. I'm going to say test time, test time, testing, whatever. And as you see, it's going to come out as an EPUB document. Tatar takes a second to compile, and you're done. All right, so now we're ready to test out our document and make sure it works for Kindle. I will leave a link in the description for this. This is the new Kindle previewer. You can put your document into here and it'll bring it up and show you how it looks. So now you're gonna to want to drag the file you just compiled into this little window right here. It says open book and it'll convert it. And it just takes a few seconds. There you go. There's your handy little book. You've got your cover right here, your table of contents, all the pages. And you can scroll through and scan each one and make sure that they all are working properly. So now the only thing I don't like about this is you can't do really fancy stuff with it. Like if you wanted to do drop caps here in the beginning of the, the first line of the page, it doesn't have any option to do that that I can see. Maybe there is somewhere. But for a real quick, I just want to get it published. I'm not worried about having it all fancy. I think this works really well. One thing I wanted to mention, now that you've done this through once, when you go to do a different book and you go into compile, it's all gonna be already set up. You already know how it was set up the last time. You can just hit compile and go. You don't have to re-choose it. Or you can have different, like you can add a new layout here by clicking down here on this plus button. It says new format and it'll ask you to choose the name of the format and all the little you know, specific things you want for it and it'll add it here on this list on the left hand side. So if you want two different kinds of ebook formatting, you can make two different custom ones and then just choose it from the left hand side when you go to publish. One last thing real quick, I do highly recommend going through the tutorial. What I like about their tutorials, they have this section here on the left hand side, what's new in Scrivener 3. So if you're used to the uh, Scrivener 1 for Windows, and you just upgraded, you can go to this page and I've been wandering around here finding out just the new stuff because I was already familiar with Scrivener before. So I definitely recommend this tutorial in general if you never use Scrivener and if you have but you're upgrading, definitely check out what's new in Scrivener 3 because there's so many cool things in here. And I will definitely be doing some tutorial videos for it. I've got them scripted, I just need to film them. But if you see something on here or if you've heard of something that Scrivener 3 has, you're curious about let me know in the comments and i will be happy to do a video for you i hope that was helpful let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for a future video if you want to hang out come visit me on social media i'm on twitter instagram and facebook at mwinkler books and if you like magical witches with a touch of sci-fi my debut novel dust on the altar is out now at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you can get anywhere books are sold. Sign up for my newsletter to get sneak peeks into book two in the series, short stories for free, and more. All the links will be down in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.